This video provides an overview of the major concepts covered in Chapter 3, The Structure of Interest Rates. Chapter 3 is comprised of three key learning objectives. First, to describe how characteristics of debt securities cause their yields to vary. Second, to demonstrate how to model the appropriate yield for any particular debt security. And third, to explain the theories behind the term structure of interest rates, which is the relationship between the term to maturity and the yield of securities. Let's start with why debt security yields vary. Debt securities offer different yields because they exhibit different characteristics that influence the yield to be offered. These differing characteristics can include credit or default risk, liquidity, tax status, and term to maturity. Let's discuss each in turn starting with credit risk. Because most securities are subject to the risk of default, investors must consider the creditworthiness of the security issuer. Although investors always have the option of purchasing risk-free treasury securities, they may prefer other securities if the yield compensates them for the credit risk. While investors can personally assess the creditworthiness of corporations that issue bonds, they typically prefer to rely on bond ratings provided by agencies such as Moody's or Standard & Poor's, which rate firms and governments that issue debt from low quality, generally rated C or D, up to the highest rated quality of AAA. Rating agencies can change bond ratings over time in response to changes in the issuing firm's financial condition, as well as economic conditions, which can influence the ability of a corporation to repay its debt. It's important to note that the ratings issued by the agencies are opinions, not guarantees. Bonds that are assigned a low credit rating experience default more frequently than bonds assigned a higher credit rating, which suggests that the rating can be a useful indicator of credit risk. Finally, the Financial Reform Act of 2010 established the Office of Credit Ratings within the Securities and Exchange Commission to regulate credit agencies to ensure they disclose their rating performance over time and establish internal controls to ensure transparency. The second characteristic affecting debt yields is liquidity. Investors prefer securities that are liquid, meaning they can be easily converted into cash without a loss in value. Thus, if all other characteristics are equal, Securities with less liquidity must offer a higher yield to attract investors. Debt security with a short-term maturity or an active secondary market have greater liquidity which is attractive to investors who need a high degree of liquidity because they may need to sell their securities for cash at any moment, even if it means accepting a lower return on their investment. Conversely, investors who won't need their investments until the securities mature are more willing to invest in securities with less liquidity so they can earn a slightly higher return. The third characteristic affecting debt yields is tax status. Investors are more concerned with after-tax income than with before-tax income earned on securities. Debt securities differ considerably in their tax status, so if all other characteristics are similar, taxable securities must offer a higher before-tax yield than do tax-exempt securities. The extra compensation required for taxable securities depends on the tax rates of individual and institutional investors. Investors in higher tax brackets benefit most from tax-exempt securities. The formula to calculate the after-tax yield on debt securities, Y-A-T, equals the before-tax yield, Y-B-T, times the after-tax rate, or 1 minus the tax rate, T. Sometimes investors need to work backwards from the desired after-tax yield to determine the before-tax yield that they want to earn on a security. The formula to calculate the before-tax yield, YBT, equals the after-tax yield, YAT, divided by 1 minus the tax rate, T. Here's a table that shows some after-tax yields based on various tax rates and before-tax yields. The last characteristic affecting debt yields is the term to maturity. The term structure of interest rates defines the relationship between the possible terms to maturity and the annualized yield for a debt security at any specific moment in time, while holding other factors constant. Now let's move on to the next major concept in the chapter relating to modeling the yield offered on a debt security. When a company wants to issue debt, it needs to consider all the characteristics we've just discussed so we can determine the appropriate yield to offer that will entice investors to buy its debt securities. The following model incorporates the key characteristics for determining the appropriate yield to be offered on a debt security. The annualized return of an N-year debt security, YN, is equal to the annualized yield or return of an N-year treasury risk-free security with the same term to maturity as a debt security of concern. 
This is RFN. Then we add the credit risk premium required to compensate for credit risk, CP, plus the liquidity premium to compensate for less liquidity, LP, plus the adjustment to the difference in tax status, TA. It's important to note that the appropriate yield to offer on any particular debt security will change over time because of the changes in the constituent components of the risk-free rate, credit risk premium, liquidity premium, and tax adjustment factors. Now let's move on to the last concept in the chapter where we take a closer look at the term structure. Of all the factors that affect the yields offered on debt securities, the one that is the most difficult to understand is term to maturity. There are three major theories that have been proposed to explain the relationship between the maturity and the annualized yield of securities. Pure expectations theory, liquidity premium theory, and segmented markets theory. Let's start with expectations theory, where the term structure of interest rates is determined solely by expectations of interest rates. To understand how interest rate expectations may influence the yield curve, assume that the annualized yields short-term and long-term risk-free securities are similar and that investors are willing to invest in either short-term or long-term risk-free securities. If investors believe that interest rates will rise in the near future, they'll invest their funds mostly in the short-term risk-free securities so that they can soon reinvest their funds in securities that offer higher yields after interest rates increase. Their action causes funds to flow into the short-term market and away from the long-term market. As the investor money moves into the short-term market, the supply curve of funds by investors shifts to the right from S1 to S2. That movement of money into the short-term market comes from the long-term market, causing the supply curve for investor funds to shift to the left from S1 to S2. Now let's consider the borrower side, which demands investor funds. Borrowers who plan to issue securities and also expect interest rates to increase will prefer to lock in the present interest rate over a long period of time. Now, this should make intuitive sense, since borrowers will generally prefer to issue long-term securities rather than short-term securities, thus shifting the demand curve for investor funds to the left from D1 to D2, putting downward pressure on the yield of short-term funds, resulting in a new equilibrium interest rate of I2, which is lower than I1. The upward pressure on the yield of long-term funds causes the equilibrium yield in the long-term market to increase from I1 to I2. Ultimately, the large supply of funds in the short-term market will force annualized yields down, while the reduced supply of long-term funds forces long-term yields up. Hence, the yield curve will shift down from an initial straight line of YC1, representing the starting point where the yields of both short-term and long-term securities are the same, to a curve where the return on short-term debt is lower and increases as the term to maturity increases. Now let's consider the impact of an expected decline in interest rates. If investors expect interest rates to decrease in the future, they'll prefer to invest in longer-term funds rather than short-term funds because they can lock in today's higher interest rate before the interest rates fall. This causes the supply of funds into the long-term market to increase, shifting the supply curve to the right from S1 to S2. The movement of money into the long-term market takes money out of the short-term market, causing the short-term supply curve to shift to the left from S1 to S2. Borrowers, on the other hand, will prefer to borrow short-term funds so they can refinance at lower interest rates once the interest rates decline. This increases the demand for lower rate financing and shifts the demand curve to the right from D1 to D2. The result then is decreased demand for long-term financing at the current high rates, causing the demand for financing in the long-term market to shift to the left from D1 to D2. The yield rates in the short-term market then increase from I1 to I2, and the yield rates in the long-term market decrease from I1 to I2. That's the exact opposite of what we saw with anticipated increases in interest rates. Based on the expectation of lower interest rates in the future, the supply of funds provided by investors will be low for short-term funds and high for long-term funds. This will place upward pressure on short-term yields and downward pressure on long-term yields. Overall, the expectation of lower interest rates causes the yield curve to pivot downward or clockwise, illustrating higher yields in the short-term and lower yields in the long-term. The second theory to explain the relationship between debt yields and time to maturity is liquidity premium theory, 
Some investors may prefer to own short-term rather than long-term securities because a shorter maturity represents greater liquidity because they are more likely to be converted to cash without a loss of value. Therefore, they may be willing to hold long-term securities only if compensated by a premium for the lower degree of liquidity. The preference for the more liquid short-term securities places upward pressure on the slope of a yield curve. This exhibit contains three graphs that reflect the existence of both expectations theory and the liquidity premium. Each graph shows different interest rate expectations held by the market. Regardless of the interest rate forecast, the yield curve is affected in a similar manner by the liquidity premium. The third theory is segmented markets theory, according to which investors and borrowers choose securities with maturities that satisfy their forecasted cash needs. Pension funds and life insurance companies may generally prefer long-term investments that coincide with their long-term liabilities. Commercial banks may prefer more short-term investments to coincide with their short-term liabilities. If investors and borrowers participate in the maturity market that satisfies their particular needs, then the markets are segmented. That is, Investors or borrowers will shift from the long-term market to the short-term market, or vice versa, only if the timing of their cash needs change. To understand how all three theories can simultaneously affect the yield curve, let's first assume the following three conditions. 1. Investors and borrowers who select maturities based on anticipated interest rate movements currently expect interest rates to rise. 2. Most borrowers are in need of long-term funds, whereas most investors have only short-term funds to invest. And three, investors perform more liquidity to less. The first condition, which is related to expectations theory, suggests the existence of an upward sloping yield curve, which is reflected in curve E in this exhibit. The segmented markets information condition two also favors the upward sloping yield curve. When conditions one or two are considered simultaneously, the appropriate yield curve may look like the curve E plus S in the exhibit. The third condition relating to liquidity would then place a higher premium on the longer term securities because of their lower degree of liquidity. When this condition is included in the first two, the yield may be represented by the curve E plus S plus L. The term structure of interest rates is used to forecast interest rates, recessions, and make investment and financing decisions. At any point in time, the shape of the yield curve can be used to assess the general expectations of investors and borrowers about future interest rates. It's generally believed that the interest rate expectations are a major contributing factor to the yield curve shape. Therefore, the curve's shape should provide a reasonable indication of the market's expectations about future interest rates, especially once a liquidity premium effect is taken into account. This diagram shows yield curves at various rates, allowing us to see how the yield curve has changed over time. The curve is usually upward sloping, but a slight downward slope has sometimes been evident, as is the case with the curves for March 21, 2007 and January 18, 2023. The yield curves for the last few years have been very low, reflecting a low annualized interest rate at any possible time to maturity. The low annualized interest rate environment started changing during the 22 to 23 period, due to the actions of the Federal Reserve to increase interest rates in response to high inflation. Finally, because the factors that affect the shape of the yield curve can vary among countries, the yield curve's shape at any given time also varies among countries. Each country has a different currency with its own interest rate levels for various maturities, and each country's interest rates are based on conditions of supply and demand for loanable funds in its own country. Consequently, interest rate changes in one country can affect interest rates in another country. 